Good morning. Good morning. Will you please join me in the call of worship? Come, let us remember our past. Prepare to enter fully into God's new day. We pause in the midst of time, the the past of eternity. For everything there is a season, a time to mourn and weep, a time to dance and laugh. God has made everything beautiful, how wonderful How majestic to God's name in all the earth. How amazing is God's care for us. We rejoice in faith and receive and give thanks to God as we have Please join in the hymn 185, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. You can be seated. And let us join together. Through all the seasons of life, you are with us, O oh God, to knit us together in mutual love and care. You pour out abundant gifts that enrich our existence and challenge us to give our lives. As we hear and reflect on your work, And please join me in the passing of the peace. Let us share God's love with one another. May God's peace follow our care and compassion for you. The love and peace of God be with you. Okay, 
uh, this is the time to pick out a song, a Christmas song, if you're interested. So if you give me a clue as what you want to sing. <laughs> okay, 184, what child is this? school. 
I made her wear this for pajama top. And it can be good for interviewing when you have to read it. All right, so it says, with God, all things are possible, it's from Matthew 19, 26. Verses 26, like my favorite t-shirt. So whenever you guys are having a hard time with giving me a test at school, or you're on a team and it's a hard, we've had a lot of team shirts, it's a hard, hard game, baseball game, soccer game, football game, I want you to think about, with God, all things are possible, okay? So I have this little card for you to take home, and remember, Matthew 19, verses... Yeah, 19, chapter 19, verse 26. And so a special place is on your refrigerator or in your mouth. <laughs> All right, so you guys can pick one. Take that back. And we'll take a little time for prayer and then we can go back. Like that one. Right, anyone? <coughs> Okay, ready? Yeah. Alright, let's bow our heads. Prepare you guys to repeat after me. No, do that. I'd say I'm going to say that. Alright, ready? Alright. Dear God. Dear God. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this day. Help us to be grateful for all the things that we have. Help us to be grateful for all the things we have. And remember that when times are difficult, remember that when times are difficult, with you all things are possible. With you all things are possible. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sue. Okay, our scripture readings will be uh, on page 604, Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 15. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill, and a time to heal. A time to break down, a time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to throw away stones, and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time of silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. What gain have the workers from their toil I have seen their business that God has given to everyone to be busy with. He has made everything suitable for its time. Moreover, he has put sense of past and future into their minds, yet they cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. I know there is nothing better for them than to be happy and enjoy themselves as long as they live. Moreover, it is God's gift that all should eat and drink and take pleasure in all they toil. I know that whatever God does endure forever, nothing can be added to it, nor anything taken from it. God has done this so that all should stand in awe before him. That which is already has been, that which is to be already is, and God seeks out what has gone by. Our next reading is Colossians 2, 6 through 7. And that can be found on page 1073. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted up and built in him and established in faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Brian. Good morning, happy new year to all 23 of us here. <laughs> yes, yes, uh, I, I take it the memo didn't go out that I was gonna speak today, so if I they did, I would probably have this place packed. But um, here I am. 
So Jacoba asked me to give my earliest reflections or history of coming to the church here and speak of my family connection. So that's what my little talk is about. My family has, has deep-rooted ties with the Congregational Church, deeper than anybody here sitting today, deeper than our pastor. I have 417 years of Congregationalists in my family. How do we, are you probably wondering, how do I know this? Well, I'm gonna start with some little history of the church. The, the Congregational Church is the oldest denomination in North America. The oldest is the Roman Catholic Church started by the Spanish who landed in Mexico and their first church was founded in 1519. It didn't come to America until 1565. And if you've ever been to St. Augustine, Florida, that's the first church in North America. The French also brought Roman Catholic Church to uh, North America and they brought theirs in 1534 and it was on the shores of a peninsula that juts out into the ocean by Nova Scotia, which is the mouth of the St. Lawrence Seaway. So they have early ties. Ours didn't come here until 100 years later in 1620. So the, uh, the early church's roots go back to 1606 in Scrooby, England. And there were three principal players in founding the Congregational Church. Prior to the Congregational Church, there was a, a, a movement called the Brownist. Richard Brown broke away from the Church of England. And so what happened at this time, it formed the Congregational Church. The Congregational Church at that time was, was known as the Separatists. It was illegal to meet into this new religion. So the king of England was the head of the church. And this is where he got the Reformation with King Henry. So Congregationists believed that only God was the head of the church, not the king or the ruler of England at the time. So the Congregationalists started this little church and they had this secret meeting. And you had to have them in secret because at this time it was illegal to go against the Church of England. So many of these people were in prison, executed, or um, they, they're ostracized to other countries like Holland. So these three principal players got together in Scrooby, England, which is a little burg, probably about the size of Pinckney today, and they met, and the three principal players are Richard Clifton, John Robinson and William Brewster. William Brewster is my 14th great-grandfather. He was one of those was instrumental in starting the Congregational Church. When he came to America, he was the spiritual leader, and he wrote the first covenant for the church of the congregation. It's been revised over the years. So there's some of the little history of that. So you can see my deep rooted here, I'm connected 417 years of history. So some of my earliest recollections coming here, my grandfather died in 1963 and he was buried out of here, of this church. This is not the original church, this is the replacement church. It sat next door, it was an older building, and I think it had structural issues, was it not? It had, it had termites and it was, just wasn't doing well. So they tore it down and built a church very close to this. So my grandfather was being buried out here. I came to church here as kindergarten, first grade, and we sat up in the balcony, because the original church had a balcony. And that was my favorite spot to go. Because up there, it seemed a mile high, and you could look down. And it seemed like everybody had children would sit up there. And it's kind of like it did in 25 years ago when we had a large group of kids, they all sat up there. So sitting up there, one of the structure changes here is you had one stairway going up. The choir loft sat over here, not on this side. And so we'd sit up there and I'd look down on here. The pastor at the time was Reverend um, Gerald Bender. And so he was my preschool uh, or um, Sunday school teacher. And I, I had a conversation this morning with Renee 
and um, um, Barbara, that's <laughs> what I had a mind thing, um, ab about where the school was, and we weren't sure if it was next door in the basement here, but I, w I had my mom, my mom was cleaning out the base, or her closet, I should say, and she found a, one of my Sunday school papers from 1964 and gave it to me, and, it's, and it was graded by Gerald Bender with his signature. I had an A and a star on it. I think it was positive reinforcement. Everyone got an A or a star. So, um, yeah, I had this paper. Um, we would leave Pilgrim Hall. We didn't have the side door as we have today coming in. You had to come in off the street right in dead center. You came up a set of steps. We're about eight steps high to this narrow covered porch with it, at the end of it, it had a brick wall, three feet high. So when service is over, we go over the coffee hour next door to Pilgrim Hall, which is, exists the same building today. But you had to go out the sidewalk, walk down in the rain, and come back in. So it wasn't until they tore the church down, they moved everything over and connected the two buildings together with the breezeway. Another memory, memory I have is a funeral. I was in high school, our neighbor across the street, we called Aunt Gladys. She wasn't related to me, but she was a member of the church here. She was somebody who babysit, watch us when my mom had to run into town. If I got into trouble um, at home, like when I was 14, I cut my finger with a pocket knife and had to have five stitches. So we, I went over to Aunt Gladys, with my hands all bandaged up, and she drove me to Chelsea and got five stitches. So she had passed away, and I was one of her pallbearers. So the problem with the old church here is when you went out the front door, from the door to the end of the church uh, steps was only like six feet wide. Try carrying a coffin out there. This was a problem. I just remember we all had to pick it up high and turn it and get it over that wall to come down the steps. So Rex would probably remember this. Um, so anyways, those were some of my early memories of, of being at the church here, so. As, um, Jana had, she wanted to come up here and talk about some, her reflection. I'm gonna pick up where he left off on history, because I did not know the history of this church until we decided to do the 175th anniversary. And that all happened because of a spark that I got when Lillian Daniel was here for Jacoba's installation. She came and we had a meeting, after, not a meeting, we had our coffee hour afterwards reception and I wanted to get a picture of her with Jacoba. And you all know that I love to take pictures. So I saw she was getting ready to leave and I followed her out the door with Jacoba and I said, wait, I have to get a picture of you two together. So they were you know, obliged, and then I said, you know, Lillian, this church is 175 years old next year, and she lit up like a Christmas tree. Lillian said, I would love to come and speak if you're having a celebration. Just let me know, get on my calendar, call my secretary. And I was like, wow. So that was the spark. I mentioned the year, she gave me the spark, and then I kept, I hung on to it, and then I brought it, talked to several people like Rick, and said, should we do something? What should we do? And we all started getting ideas and planning on having a celebration in 2023. So because of my history with pictures, and Barb Delator was one of the first people who I met when I came here, and I, I was not from a church before. My husband was. We got married in a Presbyterian church we came here to Pinckney, there was no Presbyterian church. So we wanted, we started a family, we wanted a church. And he had a friend who was a member here. And they were at our house one day and he says, why don't you come to our church? It's a lot like Presbyterian. And when we came here the first day we said, it's very familiar, the songs are familiar, the service is familiar, we like the pastor, Earl Trudgeon, we love the pastor, Earl Trudgeon. And so we decided to start coming here, and pretty soon there was a join the church meeting, and we joined. Um, 
Barb Delator then, when I was talking to her, said, I said, tell me about the church. And she said, I can't tell you about the church. I can give you a photo album. We have photo, we have pictures, pictures. So that's what I did. I started looking at the pictures and I got very interested in the church. Jump ahead now to the 175th. I was told where the history of the church was, where all the documents were. I started looking at them, going through pictures, not only from 1950, but when I joined in 1981, then I had pictures after that. So when I looked at one of the history books, um, Ray Hernandez, who was a former librarian when he came here, he had written the whole history of our church from our first pastors before we even had a building. And he got his documents from searching the libraries and from the history that was in the basement of the church. So when we celebrated our 150th, which was 25 years ago, he wrote the history and he wrote it in a book like this, no pictures. I said, I'm gonna read it and I'm gonna add pictures. <laughs> so I put together the history of the church I worked on this for months, not, not a lot, but every now and then I'd get inspired and I would sit down and I'd, I'd do these digital pages. I put together this book, 175 Year History of this church, and it was so long, I said, I'm gonna have to do an abbreviation, you know, like 12 pages instead of this many pages. So that abbreviation is in the front of this book and then all the details, all the pictures follow. And this book is out there um, in the hallway with four or five other books that I also put together based on different, um, what do I wanna say, who we are. We are a church in the community. We do things with the community. So there's a whole list of things we've done with the community. We are, um, spiritual. We have our services, we have our confirmation, we have our Bible studies, we have our Sunday school, we have our choir, all come in under spiritual. We have our fellowship groups. We had a men's fellowship in the beginning. We had a women's fellowship. We now have a joint fellowship. We have our boards. We have our executive board, our trustees that takes care of the church. Uh, we have our diaconate that takes care of the church. So we have so many things that when John and I first joined the church, they were having a building fund, and it was for this building. And we got excited because this was a lot of stuff happening in this church. You joined about that time, too. We met you and Jeanette and Rick, uh, your children, Ryan and um, Kendra. So at that point, we, you know, people would come up to us, would you like to be on this board? Would you like to be on this committee? Would you like to be a member of choir? Would you like? So all of a sudden, it was like, wow, there's so many friendly people here. <laughs> we got involved. You got involved. Look, we're still here. Brian, you got involved. And Barb Delator was the secretary, so she kept everything rolling. She knew everything that was going on. We met Dave and Lynn. They were here before us. I'm looking out here, all of you people are the core. Um, Sue, Mary, um, Angelina, you were here when you were this big. <laughs> and uh, Diana, and I mean, it's so many people that aren't here, of course, you know who they are. They are all in, uh, very influential in our joining the church, staying involved in the church, being part of the church. And then newer people came like Marianne and Harry and Carolyn and, and Bob, they uh, jumped in right away too, they got involved. And so this is a church of relationships. That's what I did on the bulletin board out there. I thought this is relation, this is relational. We had Saturday suppers. That's how John and I got to know so many people in the beginning with Earl Trudgeon was doing those Saturday suppers. And I remember him saying, I don't know if I like Saturday night because that's when I write my sermons. <laughs> you know, it's, hard, it's hard to get up on Sunday morning after being out Saturday night, you know? So um, I decided to do the bulletin board by who we are, what we've done for the community, for each other. And so the books that I put together, the books that are out there are also arranged 
as to who we are. So I hope if you haven't seen them already that you can get a chance to look at them to understand why this church is important as far as relationships with each other, relationships in the church, and relationships in the community. Okay, Brian, you're up again. <laughs> kind of add to the history is that when I grew up here, uh, there were only three churches. If you were either Catholic or Protestant, you came here to the congregational. There was a Mennonite church here, if you believe it or not. So I went to school with some of those Mennonite kids. So anybody else? All right, that's, so that's the end of our reflections of uh, our early days of coming to the church here. And we have a lot more memories to make. Awesome. Thank all right, you thank all you. very much. For the prayers of the people, I'd, I'd like to start with a moment of silent prayer. O oh God of steadfast love, trusting you, we devote our hearts to learning and our lives to walking. Teach us truth that we may walk with courage. Teach us mercy, that we may walk with humility. Teach us forgiveness, that we may walk with compassion. Teach us grace, that we may walk with strength. Teach us wonder, that we may walk with praise. Teach us goodness, that we may walk with those in need. O oh God of steadfast love, learning from you, may we walk well. And now join me in saying the, the prayer that uh, Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debts. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Where does our history lead us? Pause to consider the abundant gifts this congregation has received through the years of God in our lives. We have not earned them. We are all striving, can reveal only glimpses of mysteries of God. But as we live in Christ, we are moved to continuous thanksgiving. May that gratitude be reflected in our giving. Almighty God and glory, receive our outpouring of love in these gifts and in our renowned commitment to your purpose. For all the beauty in nature and people that have provided, we give thanks. May the gifts we offer flow through us and our church to support a troubled and needy world. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hymn 191.
the new year, rejoicing in its opportunities and facing its challenges with faith. We want to live fully every moment, embrace eternity in the midst of time. Amid the hating, wars, and casting stones, we welcome love, peace, and times of gathering. Amid losing, rending, and painful sorrows, we will seek, seek, and seek love. Go out in confidence and joy, for God crowns us with glory and honor. We will rejoice in Christ's presence with us and the joy of the civilization of God's love.